Ooh, well, that's, so for our gaming ones, we've started by singing Dirty Pop. <laughs> Dirty Pop. <laughs> yeah, every time. Sick and tired of hearing all these people talk about. What's the deal with this pop life and when is it going to fade out? I think you got to realize what you're doing is not a trend. We got, got the, the gift of melody, we're, we're gonna, gonna bring it to the end. It doesn't matter. Got the car I drive and the rice around my neck. It doesn't matter. You gotta recognize that it's just about respect. It doesn't matter. La 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 you get hyped and you do it to you every time. Come on now. Do you ever wonder why? This music gets you hurt. We should talk about real shit. Uh, I love Chris Kirkpatrick. <laughs> If, He's so I, if, fat if I'm gonna be any part of like this group, if I'm the equivalent of the Chris Kirkpatrick of the group, you want to like, be Chris Kirkpatrick? I mean, I feel like I have to be. Like, I'd really like to be Joey Fatone, but he likes hot dogs. He, he <laughs> no, <laughs> Lance likes hot, likes hot dogs. <laughs> We're talking about different kinds of hot dogs. Which wow. is the one that's going into space? Lance. Lance. And he never went into space. He never went. Oh, wow. I thought they it was never put him in space. They're like, "We're gonna put this pop star in space." Is he a pop star? Or is he just like a guy that was in the background? <clears throat> both. A little bit of both. He had, like, a little remember he had that one movie with uh, Joey Fatone in it. I and know Emmanuel he fucking went to Topanga. Yes, Danielle he Fisher. did. Yeah. Fischl? Fisher? I think she's Fisher. I think it was Fischl, Like Maybe. Fischl? Her name's Topanga. No. Shh, that's not, yeah. but okay. It's real. <laughs> All right. I've seen Boy Meets World documentary. <laughs> <laughs> Josh Meets Boy. <laughs> Josh Meets Boy Meets World. <gasps> it's just him sitting there. It's like, wow, I hey. love you, Ben Savage. <laughs> Love you. Why Ben Savage has come up in the last two podcasts we've done. Has he really? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Because we were making fun of Mike for watching it with Mal all the time. Oh, oh yeah. And yeah, Craig yeah. was like, I could do with no savages. Fred and Ben, none of them. Who's, who's Fred Savage? <laughs> Wonder His Years. Brother. Oh, okay. He's They're related? Also, yeah. yeah. He's oh. also done a shit ton of It's Always Sunny. He's like directed a shit yeah, ton of episodes. Yeah, he directs a bunch of stuff. He mm -hmm. was in uh did he do a cameo in How I Met Your Mother? I thought he did. Probably. I feel, he's I feel Fred like Savage happened. and he doesn't have anything else to do. He does nothing else. He just he, directs he just shows up places he's like hey i'm fred savage can i be in your thing and they're like and they're yeah. like holy shit you're an adult now <laughs> <laughs> you grew up he was in gold member he was the mole oh, oh yeah right. i remember that mole 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 it was that's all i know about that movie that's all i remember <laughs> that's what i block out. and i remember when mini me came down the chute and flew into e the wall that was hilarious Bonk. does that hold up that what? movie probably not it wasn't even good when we were young I mean, it felt good when I was young. I'm sorry. Mike Myers Dude, it, pretended to eat his own skin. Do you really think that was... That happened? Yeah. He was I think like, I blocked out that whole like, movie. He's like, that's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> Salty. Oh. oh, was that him Schmuck as a... Uh, a pancake? Yeah, Fat yeah, Bastard. Gold member. No, Gold Member. No, oh, gold gold when member, he was Fat yeah, Bastard, gold he shit a lot. But all right, I clearly member, don't remember skin. that movie at all. <laughs> good. Don't go back and watch it, God. even though I own all of them. Do you really? Yeah. I'm not going to watch it. Don't. I might watch it. You should watch it. I'm getting kind of mixed signals from you over here. I feel weird. Weird. I can't pick. Uh, we what's should up? Yeah. Hey, let's introduce uh, our friend Justin. This is Justin. Hi. Uh, you've probably seen uh, at this point our our D and D, at least the first episode. Probably. Uh, yeah. We're just gonna post those out. Not before this. We're just gonna post those randomly. But um, totes rando. Yeah. Justin is uh, our DM. He jumps in our DMs and he's our DM. Yeah. I do. Which I stands slide for. In. Uh, Dungeon Dick Master. Master. Dick Master. Yeah, he, he's got the biggest cock. I wish I did. God, <laughs> having a micro penis is so hard. I piss on my balls all the time. Just a little button. It's a little. It's a pleasure button. Oh, it's like you it's, can do Morse code, and then I'm it's good. a little smaller than a large clitoris. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a little bit tight. So a regular clitoris. Well, <laughs> it's a regular clitoris. <laughs> so aside from having a micro dick. Yeah, uh, you. I think last night was the first time we both played, right? Yes, last night was the first time. Um, and now Josh and I both have dice. Oh yeah, we bought we bought dice today. It's official. That's a real thing. Uh, my girlfriend is gonna love it. She's gonna be so impressed. With girls my like dice, right? To buy I think dice. so. <laughs> I'm really, I'm really excited because there were moments during the uh, the game last night where you guys like things clicked for you, mm -hmm. and it just it made it so much more fun for me. 
to to DM because I mean, this is my first time actually like physically doing it. It didn't come across that way, honestly. As someone who who uh, played, if you could actually explain kind of what the DM does, sure. So people that maybe haven't watched it or only watched the podcast or whatever. Right, right. Um, so for like about a year, I've been playing, and I decided I wanted to play with you guys. A DM, um, yeah, you did. <laughs> a DM basically sets the is like a game gatekeeper, kind of like a rule keeper. I kind of give you the story, but you know, you guys. We're telling a story together. We're all just, you know, you tell me what you want to do, and then you roll dice, and you tell me, I give you a probability of what happens. It's like group improv. Basically, it's constantly group improv, and you're pretending to be someone else who's just really, most of the time, is an extension of you anyway. Yeah. Basically made my character everything I want to be in a superhero, so. Yeah. And you, yeah, you got powers now. Feeling good about it. Yeah, I'm super, I'm super pumped. I feel like my dick is enormous. It's probably enormous. It's probably That's enormous. Canon. That's canon. It's canon now. I it's mean, canon. We all made the blood canon. just rushes and you pass out. <laughs> That's how big it because is. Because it's enormous. Because it's enormous. <laughs> um, it needs its own chain mail. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, I just make encounters for you guys. You guys fought uh, a few things. You, I think you fought three things total because I want you were level one and I didn't want you to die. Yeah, and we appreciate that. Um, You fought snakes, uh, a suit of armor that you were just fucking with. And I kept saying, are you sure you want to fuck with it? And you're like, yeah, "Yeah, I want to fuck with it. Yeah. I'm surprised it didn't try to make you like make you fillet it or like pretend like, look at this stupid (laughs) suit of armor. (laughs) I'm blowing it. I'm blowing (laughs) it. Whatever. Let's explore this house. (laughs) Uh, And then you fought a shambling mound that Michael decided to uh, axe rape with. Uh, He he killed it. Oh, that is how he finished it off. Yeah, he fastened. Can you? For those of you that haven't seen it and didn't watch it, uh, Mike, uh, spoilers. Yeah, this is spoils. Spoilers. Spoilers. Wait, so maybe we shouldn't say it. But I want to say, can we oh, talk okay. about Mike's character? Just spoilers. Please talk about Mike's spoilers. Character. Mike fastens, <laughs> just just click away. A great fastens axe. his great axe to his cock and <laughs> fucks the shambling mound in the head to death. To death. All the to while, death. he's pointing at these ghosts, <laughs> going family. <laughs> please, can you please explain to the audience? I mean, Mike's can you character? explain Mike's character? You know, uh, you, you made it basically. I mean, with Mike my, a year ago when I first tried DMing for you and Mike, um, it Josh went. Oh, Mike, yeah. I wasn't Josh and Mike here yeah. yet. It went fairly well, um, and they made characters named Chris Angel, who Chris Angel, Angel, Chris Angel. Sorry, in a uh, in a shark. And Mike decided to carry Shart over. And uh, around that time, Fast 7 was coming out. And Mike was super, like, this is going to be funny if this guy's super into, like, he's basically just Vin Diesel. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, he made uh, Vin Diesel. Uh, his brother died in a, <laughs> in a fire in the forest. In the Porsche forest. In the Porsche forest. And it's just it got really dark. And uh, so... Yeah, when he he's super into his family and his familia and, you know, family first and his catchphrase. And if you want to play the drinking game with us, it's whenever Mike goes family. It's pretty consistent. You just drink. It's pretty consistent. <clears throat> You'll be hammered after the first episode. It's going to be a little fucked up. Mm. Um, so what drew you to uh, to doing D&D stuff? Um, that's a good question. When I'm. Um, I've always been into like super nerdy stuff. I've had a comic book collection since I was about four. Um, you know, I was just super into that whole kind of culture, nerd culture. Uh, real quick sidebar: When did it become cool to like comics now? Because I remember 2008. like like people used to just be like, "Ew, you read those," and now everyone's like, "Oh yeah, love Iron I Man." I mean, when like, when I'd the l- Marvel movies started to happen, yeah, I when Iron Man, yeah, so when Iron Man first <laughs> that was hit, it. yeah. People uh, are like, oh, my God, Benedict Cumberbatch is so hot. And he's in a Marvel movie. I like comic he's books. He's Dr. Strange. That's so cool. I'm feeling strange right that now. That movie made me feel real weird. I liked that it movie. It was super good, but it's so trippy. I just want to it say. It is really trippy. Because the last episode, the ninth one, the drunk drawer episode. Drunk drawer, yeah. Which I wish I was on because you guys were talking about all the shit that I like. You know, drunk drawer, honestly, is just going to become a community yeah. thing. <laughs> we need to get more mics because everyone we've talked to or everyone that's seen yeah. it is like, Wants to be on I want to be on drunk drawer. And we're like, oh, fuck, God damn it. How many bottles are we going to have to buy for a lot? It's slowly just going to turn into a house I just, party. I wanted to say that my favorite Marvel movie, like, obviously is the same, like, Guardians of this. But I really dug Doctor Strange. I love Doctor Strange. Was Doctor. Cool. It was like the first Marvel movie where he has to really think 
as opposed to like, I'm just going to blow it up. I'm a wreck it. <laughs> I'm a wreck it. And I'm going to distract with my sweet dance moves. No, I'm going to put you in eternity in a time loop of you just killing me over and over again and basically annoy you to, uh, you know, submit. It was the little bro- uh, it's the little brother syndrome. Yeah. I'm just going to annoy you. Dormammu, until you I've come to bargain. Smash. <laughs> it's been centuries. Still, still here. Hey. Still here. Hey. Um, but yeah, I've always been into kind of like nerdy things. Um, and I remember uh, in high school, uh, we would... You know, do a lot of nerdy things, but we wouldn't delve into Dungeons and Dragons, even though secretly I've always wanted to, Um, because just the thought of going with my friends on an adventure without having to actually go on an adventure. Like wants to go outside. (laughs) Like, I like walking and going outside, but, you know, killing something in the real world is, you know, there are one, you have psychological issues and (laughs) it's illegal. Yeah. If it's something within your collective mind and I like video games, but I can burn out after what, you know, staring at a computer screen for a really long time. My eyes hurt. Yeah. Your, my eyes just get like dry as fuck. But with this, it's, um, it's a lot different and I like it a lot. Um, a year ago, I, I, I knew a friend from high school that plays regularly I just said, hey, uh, I want to kind of do this thing and make like a YouTube channel of just playing Dungeons and Dragons. Do you think maybe I could sit in for a little bit? Uh, And that time I've played through like three campaigns. Uh, We're currently doing like a fourth one. Um, And I play D&D at least twice a week in on stream and then one just fun home game that we have like six people playing with. And it's it's just it's so fun. So. Now, one of the things I'll ask is because we we referenced the Marvel uh, Mm -hmm. thing. Do you think D&D is the next big thing to blow up? Because, I mean, Stranger Things has definitely brought it Mm -hmm. back into the public eye. Um, I think there's definitely been like a gaming kind of like renaissance. There's um, a show called Critical Role I was telling you guys about. Mm -hmm. And if you're watching this, you probably have heard of it at this point. It's, you know, it's a bunch of voice actors playing D&D. They play every Thursday on stream. They play for like four hours and it's extremely insanely popular. Like it there, they had a new season that started and their website crashed. Like the stream crashed. They were streaming on YouTube, Twitch and uh, their website. They have like a, like a pay subscription website Mm -hmm. for the, you know, the channel. And, you know, it started slowing down like midstream. Like it's just been, it's just been a massive, it's incredibly massive. And it's just, um, I think all these people like are getting into D and D and tabletop gaming. Like it's something different to do. And there's a sense of community and interaction that you don't really get from like playing online or, uh, this camaraderie. Uh, I think I was telling you guys, uh, earlier today it's interesting because the dynamic already started shifting where you got with you guys where it was like um remember when shark fucked that shambling mound to death yes. into remember when we fucked up that shambling mound and remember when we went through that you know that dungeon and we trekked through it and yeah we it found becomes all something that, that you did it come yeah because as you start looking back falling on it you think of it as we did this and that's you know what's different I think in, you know, this kind of century that we went through and technology, there isn't like communal storytelling anymore. Like, you know, back in the day, you talked about stories at the campfire and it was a big kind of community kind of event. And doing that on a much smaller scale with your friends like Pat and I, we've met like maybe a handful of times. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, we've gotten like awesomely close just in the past like 48 hours no for sure yeah yeah i mean we've clicked when you stay up for eight consecutive hours just talking to each other (laughs) exactly no screens because i mean i don't know for those of you that have watched and and you know obviously us being having experienced it i didn't really look at my phone very much because i was very like i looked at it occasionally Mm -hmm. and like pictures content whatever like thought of it but was very like in stuck the, yeah. I, I i had to you were like, in you actually yeah. engaged in what exactly was going on. i couldn't i didn't have time to look at my phone because mm-hmm. i was like god the snakes mike's <laughs> trying to talk to them oh, what god, is that happening that was a great moment that, oh my god it's just there were so many great moments and it's you guys going out of your comfort zone and like what i really liked about the first episode i really liked only because you know you asked a lot of questions and you tried a lot of new things which i appreciated because it la- allows me to kind of shift and 90% of dungeon mastering is just talking out of your ass. Like I have a good idea of what's going to happen and I have stats and stuff, but it's talking out of my ass. It's totally just making it up on the fly. Yeah. Which is always something you've been really good at too. Oh, thank you. Um, Cause I've, I've had an experience with my dungeon master where he's set like a kind of um, 
thing that we're a path we we're supposed to go on and mm-hmm. then you totally turn left or you turn right and it's it's just it's the only thing you can kind of do like you can't do that in a video game it railroads you yeah yeah uh you get ra- railroaded a lot uh dungeons and dragons uh if it was like home games you can just go anywhere and this we're doing a module there's going to be a little bit of railroading, but there's so much fucking content and so many things for you to do. Like that you can just, can just spend really an cool. hour of you just talking to just people in a fucking town. Yeah. And what, what what's cool about it is it is that group <coughs> building. Like mm-hmm. you take lead, but whatever actions we take yeah. influences the story. Like what and most it? other stories that are told are, are very like they hand you a finished product. Yeah. Like yeah, if it's, it's a movie, linear. this one's pl- very, it's very linear. Whereas this can go a bevy of different directions. Like you said, we could uh, last night, if there was more time, we were going to encounter ghosts and, and mm-hmm. do this and do that. And like, that's the thing for the next one I want to do. I don't really want to put a time constraint on it. You right. know, if we can get in the same room at noon, yeah. Order pizza and just kind of sit and just let the story go mm-hmm. naturally. Mm-hmm. That would be ideal for me because right. I feel like, I mean, even though I had fun and like, obviously, like what you guys don't know is when Mike left, mm-hmm. we did a separate thing yeah. for another we three did another, and a half hours. Yeah, three and a half sorry, hours Mike. of just fun <laughs> stuff. Not sorry, Mike. <laughs> Not sorry. I met had so Mongo. much fun. Yeah, we met Mongo. Um, Who I just totally made up. But yeah, that was totally fake. Yeah, I yeah. thought that was part of it. Yeah, I thought that was did. something you were No, you I were just ready made up for. Mongo. I just, I went, I'm going to make this character really quick. And I just punched him into like, a, there's a website. It's like fast character. I just went, this is what I want. This is what I wanted him to be, and then I had all of his stats ready to go. And it's all on my laptop now. Yeah, now Thanks. I have Mongo. Now I have Mongo's Claymore. Yes. Proud of me, Mom. Proud of me, Mom. <laughs> Got the Claymore. Got the Claymore. Mom, Mom, Mongo. Um, but, yeah, I mean, honestly, like, next time, that, that would be more uh, <laughs> ideal for me. Yeah. Because I feel like we were into the i mean we were looting everything at yeah. that point we were like how, what can we carry everything great yeah let's do that yeah uh that's also like that's what what as you go as you move forward you you know you can kind of figure out what you like about D. if you personally like the battles or yes if you like looting <laughs> yeah. the bodies if i, I want to like, kill stuff or, i like all of it or you like yeah the role play aspect like interacting Craig's with gonna be our banker yeah, Craig. I'm really excited to play with Craig. It's gonna be it's gonna change the dynamic for sure. But yeah. um I definitely but that's think, what's fun about it. Yeah, I definitely think mm-hmm. that it's for me it'll just be something else that um that, you know, is another is it's another for, form of interaction. Yeah. And we'll have to act differently. Like the three of us will will interact differently than when it's the four of us. Right. Or when it was the two of us. Mm-hmm. You know, I think we were much more um we were much much less inclined to jump into battle when it yeah. was just Josh and I because I'm not you know I like you said like I'm a I'm a paladin and much less uh, inclined to just run into battle mm-hmm. because I'm the person that's also to heal yeah. and Josh is this tall <laughs> so it was like okay we don't we're yeah. gonna die if what I, I thought die. was really interesting and what was really good was you know during your first encounter you kind of came up with a battle strategy. Josh was going to open the door. You guys were going to try to distract this, you know, snake mound. And then as soon as he got over the door open, you were going to cheese it. Yeah. Like, it's not like a, you know, what it's, it's okay to run away from things. I think a lot of people who play D and D or play games in general, it's like, I got to, you know, trek through this. You are perfectly fine running away from things. You could totally run. Like if you were fighting the mound, you could have totally ran away from the mound. It would have followed you. Yeah. And gone through different like doors and shit. But you know, but we could have. You could have. That would have changed the game a little bit. I'm glad I we killed it. it, though. Yeah, I'm glad you guys killed it. I'm glad Mike skull fucked it. With, <laughs> Next time, I do want to do battle maps because then battle maps raises it to another level where you can visually see where everything is. Yeah, and we that got made a huge to, difference for me. Difference yeah. for me when we right, when we, we played the second time and we actually had the things to learner. put down and mm-hmm. see where we were because I can visualize it. But knowing yeah. how far I am, honestly, really I think I'm going to like make my hero forge today, and then oh yeah, my next my next paycheck, I'm probably gonna order it. Oh shit, hero so forge! For just for anyone time, who doesn't know, hero forge is, is so like cool. a uh, it's a character piece generator, so you can pick you can make as detailed own. as you want and just order it and get yeah, it. Custom. You can add as much as you want, which is really cool. And it comes in in whatever form you or you order it and like you can paint it yourself. I'm probably going to be a, a high maintenance bitch and have someone else that professionally paints paint it for me cuz yeah. For something like that, yeah. yeah. I what's, would too. What's really cool is also like it's 
in the past year, it's it's been an interesting hobby. Um, it's not super cheap, but it's not like overly expensive. Uh, it, once you have friends that have most of the books, you basically you have the books in yourselves. Because what I found as it's very you, communal. Exactly what I found as a player, like I my group that I play with, they were all super like, yeah, please dungeon master something. I'd love to play. Like what you'll find also is most people who dungeon master they like playing too, and you know you might get a you know, the itch to try to do something and after a while. And it's just, it's such a cool, like interchangeable kind of thing. And I'm so locked into being a paladin right now. I can't even imagine <laughs> dungeon mastering. No. It feels like it's a lot of research too. Cause you have to know what's possible. It It is. Um, and that comes with experience. Like I don't know, certainly everything, uh, definitely don't know everything. I would say I'm an all right dungeon master only because I don't, Hey, you're the I best dungeon master I've ever had. Thanks, man. Uh, you bet you're the best slider in the DMs. Mm. <laughs> uh, it's just it's something that I tried to to learn as I went. And I remember the first time we played a year ago, I didn't know how encounters happened. Like I didn't know how you fought at all. So yeah. I made you guys avoid it at all costs. Don't fight anything. I'm like, <laughs> you're like, can we fight something? I'm like, I don't know how that works. So no. <laughs> no. But, you know, after a year, we you fought a bunch of stuff. Yesterday. Yeah, you fought. Yeah. I'm like, oh, you want. Well, what is it? After the first episode, Mike's like, we didn't fight anything. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> the guy that tried to talk to the snakes was like, we didn't fight anything. Well, that's because you were busy talking to snakes, Mike. Let me explain. <laughs> Wait till I explain. <laughs> Freeze frame. Um, Lord. But yeah, it's just it's how something good here. <laughs> You're probably wondering how I got here. <laughs> that's me. Record scratch. No, not the snakes. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> um. What's also really cool is I love miniature painting. I think we talked about it a little bit earlier as far as like it's like a Zen thing. Yeah. Um, if you ever like are able to look into it, the same people who do Critical Role, they have a whole bunch of other stuff. They have something called Painter's Guild and Will Friedle, oh, Terry McGinnis. Yes. Oh, yeah. Paints all these Eric miniatures. Matthews. Eric Matthews. He, he paints all of these miniatures and he showed his first miniature he painted, which he used with uh, Crayola washable marker and it looks awful. And it's on his. Twitter. I wonder why. Yeah. No. And then you see him in this journey. You get a whole bunch of like awesome tips. And it's just it's so it's just it's another aspect to the hobby that just um, if you want to go that route and miniatures is kind of your thing. My thing is I love collecting dice. I have a dice for every single character I have. How many characters do you have? <clears throat> I, I've had at this point five. Uh, one of my characters does share the same dice set, but I have, I have a rogue dice. That's the one I was using for the dungeon mastering. Mm -hmm. I have pink dice for my paladin. I have uh, swamp dice for my swamp ranger. And then I have the blue dice for my cleric. And it's just, I love collecting them. I think they're, you know, if you find a set that really just speaks to you as like, this looks like something my character would associate with them. Right. It just, it gets me in a proper headspace. I need to it. get a high maintenance set of dice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of sparkles in it. Yeah, yeah just exclusively spark sparkles yeah. and no matte anything. <laughs> like it's just got to look clean. They do. Ha they do have the translucent dice. And what's also awesome about them is you can always paint the numbers a different color. If you're like like the pink ones I have, I mm -hmm. wanted them pink and gold, and they came in pink and white. That's another thing I was able to do. Just go through and it. You go into that zen like mode of painting like tiny little it. numbers. And it's just you know those are custom dice now. No one else has those kind of dice because I painted them. Yeah. You know, there were some metal ones, too, that were looking really cool. The metal Yo, ones if I could dope. get some wood ones, uh, I'd they, be all about they that. They probably have wood ones. I'm going to have to find should, them. Yeah. You, should, you know what? Etsy. Etsy. Oh, yeah. Etsy, Etsy has a shit ton of D&D stuff. I'm about Etsy. Yeah. Like I did like the night we were talking about and the night I looked at Hero Forge and mm -hmm. like was was dicking around. Um, I went on Etsy and I was like, there's so many things. I was going to say, like. When we were just talking about it and planning, I'm like, Patrick's going to get hit really hard. Oh, yeah. No, you're going to be get um, bit really hard. Because the whole time you're like, dude, I'm so pumped. I'm already I'm on the so Hero Forge thing. Up. I made my character. Like, I'm ready to go. I'm like, we haven't even rolled anything yet. <laughs> no, we rolled nothing. And I was like, I'm, I'm in. I'm I in was like, I need to buy this. I need to buy this. I want to buy all of it. Mm -hmm. It was it was, it was bad. Yeah. It was bad. It was intense. I'm How much it, money but... do you think you've sunk into um, D&D so Over far? the course of the year. Uh, I mean, the books I got on sale for like 30 each, so that's like 60. Dice are like anywhere from like 10 to 20. Um, I bought I two for $13 today. There you go. What? I would say anywhere, maybe around after everything's said and done, maybe like $500, 500 to six. I mean, and over the course of a year, that's not yeah. bad. And it's, it's and not how much all that enjoyment once. has it, you know. So, like so many fucking hours. When you're, there, yeah, exactly. There when, you, been, when you equate it to hours. There's, uh, what is it? So many things. Like, I got 
through like I had a really rough breakup like starting last year and for the first like couple of months of playing D&D I was able to it was so weird it was through the role play aspect I was able to work through my shit because yeah, I made a character like therapy. I made a character eerily similar to me where I was at the moment and uh the way he acted was the way I felt and then as I went through and I was you know forging these things with my friends who I just reconnected with after like six or seven years of not seeing them. So it was a way of, you know, going through all of that. And I thought it was really cool. Uh, there's a really interesting Ted talks about the importance of role playing games in uh, development. Now, uh, if somebody wanted to get into mm-hmm. playing D and D, what would, how would you advise them to do that? Okay. Like what, what steps should they take? Depending on how much they want to spend in it. Let's say they don't want to spend anything. Roll20 uh, is a website. Roll20.net has everything you need as far as to run a game. You can run it online. So if, say, I was in Tampa right now and you guys were here, we could potentially still roll and play a game. Uh, there's also another website where I got our you know, our side mission yesterday uh, called Drive Through RPG. Uh, they have everything in a digital format. And most game systems, like there's one called Call of Cthulhu that's very popular. And if you don't want to yeah. dump in, you know, 70 bucks for your rule book, they have a 20 like page uh, free starter adventure that it just runs you through a scenario. So if you want to find if this is something for you and you don't even want to like go out and get dice, use the D20 system on, you know, roll 20. You click as you roll and then you just kind of like, you know, you play that way. Don't roll a one. Don't roll a one. It's very like when I first started, it's very it seems very intimidating, but there are so many Reddit communities for role playing games. There are so many message boards and forums. And what I found is everyone is just super nice. Everyone is more than happy to like say, oh, I did this. Like when I was preparing for Death House, I was looking at different ways of trying to get you guys hooked into it. And like, oh, how do you not total party kill your complete, you know, pl- all your players? And so it's just it's there's just so much information out there. And if you really want to delve into it, like now is the time to do so. Do and you, if you don't mind spending money, like remember, I bought the twenty dollar like starter kit. Yeah. And it was that it you gives bought that you every- when you were here last. Yeah. Right. Then it gives you everything. It gives you a set of dice. For everyone to like share and use, it gives you characters already generated, and it gives you like a mini like you know adventure. Did did you like how many other tabletop gaming communities have you got into? Because I okay, so I we into. went we went today yeah. we went to uh, Warhammer <laughs> oh, in God. in Orlando yeah. yeah and it was just it was weird because we walked in and it was like a record scratch happened yeah like everyone, everyone was stopped talking. talking and just stared, stared at us stared and at walked us. in yeah. and uh, we went there trying to find like miniatures and stuff mm-hmm. uh, but all they have is warhammer and the yeah but yeah. is it like that is it a kind of a clicky thing um i'm sure there are clicky things like nerd culture is super weird and i'm sure you can attest to this pat like nerds i know nerd stuff nerds like i like sports too i like me too go football i like sports refs. um refs i love refs um you're the worst nerd nerd <laughs> like you weren't into any of this stuff you also like don't know anything about you're the worst nerd I'm, but you're such a nerd <laughs> i'm great i'm great there's um i would say there's like a clicky feeling like the kind of thing that you see with like neck beards and bronies that kind of thing yeah um but they're honestly i went to we i i started showing you about hero clicks yeah and i got into hero clicks which is another tabletop kind of game uh, a couple of years ago, and there was a place in uh, Newport Ritchie called Yancey Street Comics, and they did a game night every Saturday. And one day, you know, I was looking at their calendar. They're like, Hero Clicks. I'm like, hey, I got these when I was a kid, uh, and it's still going strong. Let me just check it out. And I went in. I didn't buy anything, and I saw this, like, group of people playing, and there was this brother and his, you know, his other brother. Uh, and they were playing, and I said, hey, can I just sit and watch you guys play? And he's like, yeah, sure. Like, they're all welcome to, like, they're more – people are – you'll find is are more than happy to teach you how to play. So something. that's something I, I kind of want to backpack on with yeah. this, this next question. Do you think, cause there's a stigma and that's mm-hmm. something I've, I've noticed and, and I don't uh, let my nerd flag fly as, as high as maybe I should, or maybe yeah. I, maybe I do more than I think I'm I wearing do. wearing a Star Trek but, shirt. I mean, let it fly, man. I mean, I, I got, I'm, I'm a nerd. Like it's yeah. not a secret, <clears throat> but um, I don't like uh, put it out there as much, even mm-hmm. though now I'm like, Hey, look, I have a podcast and look at my dice. So maybe <laughs> I am letting it fly a little more than I think, yeah. but there's a, there's a stigma for sure. I think, and there's, I guess I'll put this to both of you guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that nerds are very secluded and mm-hmm. and do you think that that's maybe a little overblown by pop culture and a little more because I mean 
any nerd that I've come in, I go to comic book shops yeah. and I go to, you know, cool, cool stuff. And, and right. it seems like it's more communal than people give it credit it is. for. It is. If I can, uh, like, put it in a movie, like, pop culture terms, like, most people think nerds are Big Bang Theory nerds. They're either super smart, super antisocial, never seen a girl before. Like, when people go into comic book shops, like, all the dudes are looking at her. That's very unlikely. It's more like Dante and Randall from Clerks, where it's just some two kind of like dudes just hanging out. They're super into like specific things like Star Wars and comics, right. hockey. Like it's, you know, it's it's a lot more communal and it's a lot more of you. I, of course, you're going to run into those people that are online and super into, you know, very angry and very opinionated about their stuff. Like if you go on YouTube, there's a shit ton of like bigot DVD and D players. But there are so many like to counterbalance that like there are so many nice people out there that you know there's reddits that are just people looking to play games and you know just find like, something that find, find something. people who like the same things that you exactly. like exactly i think it's really more of a tribal thing it is like people it definitely who just, is they find their group and that's the only group they want to spend time with right uh it's i you know people don't like change <laughs> yeah <laughs> change that's is in hard. everything that's in everything that's not even just nerd stuff yeah. that's just in life but um, yeah, I just feel like it's something that the more I've the more I've I've gone into nerd culture, the more time I've spent in nerd culture, mm-hmm. um, I, I feel like that's an overblown thing. Like, yeah, I feel it really like, is. I feel like they're like, oh yeah, nerds live in their basement and blah blah blah. And like, my 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 girlfriend knows how fucking nerdy I am. She mm-hmm. knows because she's my girlfriend. Yeah, and she's like, yeah, you like stuff that I have no idea about, but whatever i think when when being a nerd is your defining characteristic Mm -hmm. then that's what you see are the people who are are the stereotypes yeah Mm -hmm. but people like like us who who have other interests as well it's not our defining characteristic exactly so we're not we're not like i feel like i walk like like when we walked into the warhammer thing i feel like people are like that guy they were they were mostly that, that guy stereotype. like we to be fair we're all wearing like snapback hats and we just we look like douches and we walked in on their like their little enclave that you know there are new people here and yeah. you know people don't like change. But what perfect example? We also went into that other gamer store where you got the dice, and it was no one was off a beat. Everyone was playing their game. Everyone was super nice. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. You know that's there's a difference between you'll find the weird specific stuff like Warhammer the store. Yeah. And then this is a game store. We like to play. You know, we have Magic uh, tournaments and we have Yu Gi Oh tournaments and. You know, you'll find places where if my friends weren't going to let me play their game, there's something called D&D Adventure League. So if you've ever wanted to just do it, it's free to go. And there's a DM already waiting there. There, You know, you might meet some people that you might want to, you know. It's like a physical place. It's a physical like it's like a game store like there. Oh, so okay. you'll go okay. on their website or you go on D&D.com and they have like Adventure Leagues and mm-hmm. they tell you the game stores that are playing it, what time they're playing it. And they have modules like adventures you could go on with, you know, you can bring a friend or you just go and just try it out. And everything is usually provided like you just print off maybe a character sheet and then most people have more than one set of dice and they're usually more than happy to, you know, share it. Mm-hmm. And you know, oh, it's I have my own dice. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> we can be the people with two sets of dice. <laughs> What's nice is it's non-committal. It. You don't have to commit if you don't want to and you find like, oh, maybe this isn't for me. I just say if you have the inkling to do so, just try it. And I really wish we did when we were younger. Because it could have been yeah. something really cool to do. There's a there's there's a weird stigma behind it. You know, it's always been. Uh, I feel like it's always been like, oh, D and D nerds in a basement. And I mean, even in like what's popular now, so mm-hmm. like Stranger Things, it's it's four or five kids in yeah. a basement, like in their mom's basement, and they're yeah. all twelve. And like, hey, I'm gonna be 27 next month. I'm and already 27. Yeah, it's like yeah, I, I but it. I I, I went this. and bought dice today, and like I uh, honestly like mm-hmm. that was some of the most fun I've had doing something like that. Like at the end of the night, we were all like, I don't know if I looked at you mm-hmm. as soon as we got into the dungeon because it was just us looking at each other. Yeah, and it's yeah. like okay, what's the next step? What do we do? And I feel like um, I think I I feel like there was there were roles kind of mm-hmm. figured out, and yeah. I felt like I kind of had to lead. And that's just mm-hmm. that's a that's a, a life thing. Like yeah. I feel like I'm I'm a natural leader, and it was just kind of like looking at Josh for affirmation. Are you comfortable mm-hmm. doing this, Mike? You're gonna be the battering ram. Yeah, you're yeah. Gonna, and that was basically what uh, we like. That that was something that I felt like kind of just happened naturally. Naturally, yeah. What's what's cool is it also you know it builds different kind of like 
social skills, like leadership roles. Mm -hmm. um, problem solving is a really big piece of D and D. Uh, diplomacy. You know, you know, Mike. Or, did, yeah, Mike yeah. immediately tried doing that, which was you know, and With you guys snakes. did that during your you know your side mission where you're like, can we just talk to the orcs? See, was if there we can ever a them? chance that we would? I wanted have you guys succeeded. to fight something, so there was no chance. I wanted Mongo to come out. I okay. wanted you to have some action because you know. What's D&D without a little bit of like a little bit of we did. So, I, I mean, let's run through that a little bit and let let everyone know. I mean, OK, so so Josh and I, when Mike left last night, that was after we defeated the yeah. swamp, the, swan, the shambling mountain, shambling mountain. So yeah. after we defeated the shambling mount, um, which is a very high level, which is a higher level monster like you guys should not have survived the fight. But Justin rolled like shit. So it was yeah, cool. it worked I, out well. I rolled like shit. Um, so Josh and I were buzzing. Uh, afterwards <laughs> and we were like we want to we want to keep playing we want to play again like and it, it wasn't we we didn't i don't know what the proper term is but we didn't want it to be canon we didn't want it to yeah carry over into you what just our, to our, thing, stuff. our our actual mm -hmm. um you know our game our campaign i guess with mike yeah but uh, i do want to keep my the thing i want i told so. you you can you <laughs> yeah. want it i, I told, was told you can. i was told that this is mine now and i'm going so the to thing is it. you know every once in a while if you know when mike or someone else leaves and we do like a like this is going to be a fun bonus mission and then you can you know carry it's dlcs you can carry your lead yeah. over yeah if you get you know, cool stuff it's not within it. the canon of the the series so Ooh, you didn't right. get experience for your fight but you got like I got a weapon. You got a weapon and you got some like you figured out some stuff. Right. So how does experience work in the game? So you can go a couple of ways with experience. Uh, the book suggests milestone. Uh, so like when you were going through and you found like a, a certain secret door or you defeated a certain enemy, then it, it would give you that experience to go to the next level. Uh, it can I, I, I've currently doing two campaigns one is an experience campaign and one is a milestone kind of campaign mm -hmm. uh the milestone can get frustrating we're at doing times. more milestone stuff right Right. yeah milestone can get frust frustrating at times because you're beating all these things you're getting all these things and you're like i'm still level like five yeah uh experience uh is i like experience it's fun it's more of for me personally it's a home brewery kind of thing each monster does give you experience like the shambling mound has a certain set and uh, and then you acquire that. And what you're supposed to do and what a DM is supposed to do is you get like a group XP and then you you distribute it. You divvy it out. Yeah. Depending on who does more damage. and Right. And you can stuff. do that as well. Uh, it's really up to the DM. I think they just to keep everything fair in the book, it says just, you know, spread evenly, mm -hmm. evenly. But most people aren't going to do that. If you particularly killed something or you did something in character, I had something that uh, my DM did during my first campaign that I wanted to get into character and my ranger was a gross swamp ranger man thing and so i just said all right when we go out i'm just gonna put dirt on my face and i got like uh, 200 experience because he's like you're doing something in character and you're getting into it that's so cool you can award experience whenever you want i wanted to award you the you know the claymore because i thought it'd be something cool to do because you guys wanted you know you wanted to continue and run to play so I and i ruined an orc just ruined <laughs> straight I ruined ruined him um, Put him on a pike. Yeah. So we're gonna. We'll. we'll I want to talk about that a little bit. If you're. If you're cool talking about like that. Talk that, about that side campaign yeah. that we did. Yeah. No, I'm all just, about that. Just to, we didn't record it. Yeah, we didn't record anything. We thought right. about it. Um, but we just kind of wanted to do uh, cameras off just for, just so. I mean, it was. I feel like we're not. I don't feel like we're performing when the when the cameras are on for D and D. Mm -hmm. But it just kind of wanted. I wanted to kind of turn off. And just, yeah, uh, we definitely got more. There was problem I think, solving. I would say at the about the second episode, I feel like you forgot the cameras were on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I agree with that. Um, we definitely had to. It's it's something. I mean, I fidget with my mic constantly, and, and I, I walk, talk away from it. Yeah, mic so it's always something that I have to be you know wary of and conscious of, mm -hmm. um, especially because I do talk loud. Um, right. That's thanks, mom. Puerto Rican. <laughs> um, hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, I feel like uh, it was just it was just to turn off. And uh, I mean, can you run us through, run us through. So you, you dropped the website already where you right. got. So I went to th drive through RPG. Like I said, they have a whole bunch of like free things, but also if you want to spend like $5, they have like modules that you can run through. So I spent like $5 to 
on this module that, you know, it seemed like it was pretty good. I read through it a little bit, kind of got an idea, learned as I went about what the story was about. Because he didn't have anything prepared for us to just exactly. Like, just I didn't think we would him. do it. like the minute 1 p.m. hit. I'm like, yeah, we're just going to chill. And then you're like, no, we're playing more. And I'm <laughs> like, going I'm again. like, what? can you give me like 30 minutes? And you're like, yeah, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. And you're like, but yeah, we're playing though. But we're playing. Again. And I'm like, <laughs> OK, um, but I, you know, I found this campaign and it was like the something of the citadel and it uh it involved like this wizard locking himself in his tower and a I labyrinth. definitely want to finish that too and uh, oh yeah we didn't finish it no you it's, <laughs> it's, it said it's point. like yeah, a three that- session long thing so it's definitely like a small like side kind of thing that could just be for fun mm-hmm. um definitely want to keep doing yeah, it. and it was i think it was in a mountaintop and you went into the village and you went to this bar and you started interacting with people at the bar which bars are fucking fun as shit to go through as a D character mm-hmm. buying ale as you met a contact who said i'll guide you to this you know forest but you know my house got broken into can i have like some money so i can start rebuilding went to a cave after traveling for a shit ton and then you had an encounter yeah, so we ran into uh, to, to to two orcs. Yeah, and uh, that was that was pretty immediate. <laughs> yeah, um, we were so we camped in this cave. the The general consensus again, we're go, we're going to this citadel. There's a crazy dude. We're trying to find out why he's crazy and what we can do to to make him not <laughs> right. crazy. Rough childhood. Yeah, um, rough childhood. Rough. And we took. Uh, watching this cave. So you guys remember dirt spoilers. He's not dead. He is alive. Um, even though he wasn't in the house at all. Yeah, he could have he could have been he would have been a nice the way he was wrecking face. Yeah, I didn't think he would be so awesome, but he because he was so well rested from not doing he was shit super yeah. rested. Yeah, he just sat outside the house and he was like, I'm going to quiver occasionally because I don't know where my paladin man is. Yeah. I don't know where Rufio is. Um, but yeah, I mean, he wrecked face. We met these orcs, Mm -hmm. uh, that he heard. And because I was rolling poor, uh, I, no one else heard Dick. Everybody else was like, whatever. But I, uh, I ended up waking up our guide Yep. and he was like, oh fuck, they're going to be orcs. And we walked out and guess what? Orcs. Yeah. And, uh, we had to fight a big thing. Uh, uh, what is it? He was a Goliath. A Goliath. Like I wanted you guys, cause you first started out. I wanted you to just to do everything. The base like kind of thing, which Mm -hmm. is the player's handbook. Um, But there are expansions for everything. A Goliath is uh, something in a different book called Swords of the Coast, I want to say. And they're these massive, like seven to eight foot, just behemoths that, you know, are great for being barbarians. They're rage monsters. They're, they're great. And you can be basically anything that you encounter. You could basically ask and try. I'm sure there's someone out there who's like, I've been a shambling mound ranger or, you know, I was about to ask if anyone plays those types of characters. Yeah. Uh, like I know Chris Angel was a, a drow, which you don't, you know, encounter often. Those are dark elves that you usually have to fight, but you know, people want to be something different. Something, be something weird. Tieflings are super cool. Uh, my paladin is currently a tiefling, which is a devil person. So there's like, there's just so many, possibilities and then i was telling you people make their own shit all the time like a werewolf boxer like oh yeah boxing class and it's the pugilist like there's so much cool stuff out there that if you ever find something and you know you want to try to find a game just you know ask your dm hey can i be this boxer or i just want to be batman yes uh <laughs> and what's cool is you can build batman like people have built batman which is yes. i think when i looked it was monk and rogue yeah, but we wanted to give you armor and we wanted yeah. to give you fucking smites. I'm ready. I, I, I'm very <coughs> happy being Rufio. Yeah, Rufio yeah, Rufio's a, a good character. character. He's pretty dope. So I, mm-hmm. I know you do a lot of writing. Yeah, a lot of uh, you've been writing scripts for as long as I've known you. Yeah. Do you ever use D&D to to kind of inspire ideas? Because it um, feels like it'd be really good for that. It is uh, what it is. Or is, vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. With with writing movie scripts, I found uh, after I got a nine to five job, my inspiration was just shit. Yeah. Because uh, most of the time I could be left alone for four hours and just think. And I have the worst ADD that I just think of different stories in my head and I just keep going. Uh, with d and I found that it allows me to write scripts and make movies without really having a budget for it, mm-hmm. which I really like, uh, you know, uh, and it's more legal than guerrilla filming. Exactly. <laughs> Which, you know, I still, I love filmmaking. I, I, you know, I try to write every possible chance. I'm working on a script now that's, you know, a boxing movie that I've, I've never delved into it, but I thought it would be something interesting to do. When did you start writing that? I, maybe a few months ago, I kind of stopped writing it, but I'm 
picking it back up again, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I picked it back up last week. And so, um, cause I have an actor friend that I really want to work with and she's like, write me something. I'm like, I got you. Cool. And so I, uh, also, um, she's a huge nerd as well. Plays D and D with her boyfriend all the time. They have their own home campaign, and they're gonna help. They asked if they wanted to, you know. I asked them if they wanted to play one of our games, and you know, yeah, it's just it's something really cool to reconnect, and you know, I feel like more and more you're finding people who you wouldn't expect yeah. to play. Yeah, like um, is it Vin Diesel? Vin plays? Diesel loved D and D. Huge. Joe Mangiano, Ma- Mangiano, uh, the from yeah, I, he's from Magic Mike. and Magic Mike. Oh, he's the, also, the big he's, guy, he's right? Also he's in How slave. I Met Your Mother. His husband, he is. his husband. Uh, his wife is uh, Sofia Vergara. Yeah. He's a huge yeah. Dungeons and Dragons nerd. He's on Critical Role. He plays this dragon paladin, and he's he fucking a amazing. Like yeah. he's fucking great in it. Like Chris Hardwick's been on their their show. Well, Chris uh, you know, Eric for Will Friedle is always on it. Uh, I think uh, Will Wheaton was on it. At Does one he do point. the Terry McGinnis voice? Uh, he basically plays Terry McGinnis. Yeah. If Terry McGu- McGinnis was a monk or a fighter. And he just has this bad attitude and he's just wrecking shit. Oh, that's great. And he's just annoyed the whole time. All right. Gonna, I guess this is a new thing I have to watch now. <laughs> it's oh, it's I def- fun. It's fun to watch. And You said yeah. there's like 200 four-hour episodes? The first season is 115 episodes. Holy balls. They're about three to four hours each. So it's something that you can you know put on in the background while you're doing something. It's not something you really have to commit to watching. Uh, they, it's a great jumping on point cause they just started season two. They're on episode like nine. Um, I have to catch up actually, but it's, it's something that I look forward to on Thursdays cause they play every Thursday. They are on California time though. So it does start at like 10, Yeah, but it's something I look forward to during the week. I'll watch on normal lunches. Pat time. Yeah. Normal pad time. So if it's something that you get into and then y- you get inspiration from it, you're like, I've never seen like a hex blade warlock before. That's fucking awesome. Or, you know, a drunken fighter monk. That's really cool. I feel like part of it, too, is like one of the things that I think is underrated in playing is, like you said, it's a lot of critical thinking. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of pu- puzzle solving. And I feel like if someone does something that is in this, a similar class to you, you can go, oh, fuck, why didn't I think I could do that? Yeah, exactly. And it's one of those things. It's kind of like a copycat kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But it's still like, again, why didn't I? Th- oh, you know, that's something I can bring into yeah. blah, blah, blah. And what's cool is you can get into that's multi-classing. <laughs> So if you want to say, I'm going to go Paladin, but five levels, and then you're like, I need to get some fighting moves, and Fighter has some shit I want to do. And then you dive yeah. into different levels of Fighter. Mm-hmm. The only three classes that you want to go all the way to 20 with are Cleric, uh, Druid, and Barbarian. Everything else is fair game. So when you hit level 20, yeah, there's no more experience. What do you no. do then? There have been like level 20 campaigns i haven't watched any but you mm-hmm. just make the encounters deadlier and they're more epic in battle so you know you're when you're level one you're not even an adventurer yet right you're, you're just literally like just some, some guy it's like the beginning of zelda like you go into a cave he goes it's dangerous out there here take this you take it you start killing things yeah that's about it and then at level 20 and you're everything can kill you yes <laughs> and then at level 20 you're just like you know you're fucking fighting gods and shit Oh, that's sick. So it gets very Kratos y. Yeah, it gets a lot more intense. And you people run twenty level games. There's one that there is an ongoing D D game that's been going from like I think the seventies. And it started off with like Holy kind shit. of like a Bruce Lee Chinese connection thing where it's like we have a fighting school and we're the best fighting school here, but they have a rival fighting school and it's just it's been going. It's just ongoing. Is it wait two separate like no, dungeon it, masters? No, it's one, it's the same dungeon master. There's something on YouTube if you look up like the endless D and D game, mm-hmm. and it's just something that they've been playing for fucking years and years. And you have people coming in and out because you know life moves on. Yeah, but right. It's still ongoing, That's and they insane. still do it at least once a week. I think I would work <coughs> all of them. <laughs> you. Yeah, with My your level, level three. three, level three, just dump in a smite. Bah! Come at me, bro. Come at me, bro. It's just it, it. What I love about it is there's so much you know creativity with it. There's so much like interchangeability. It's a lot of DIY kind of stuff, and I've always been into that. Yeah. And it's RPGs are like super super rad. I find when I get really obsessed with something, I get obsessed with it for like a mm-hmm. long time. That's me. So it's just it's it's my new obsession that I've had for the past year, and it doesn't look like I'm stopping anytime soon. No. Yeah. My goal today was to buy dice, and I bought two. Yeah. So like, so you you're exceeded. already going for yeah. a miniature. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm already go. like 
plotting. You're already head. talking about binders too. Yeah, like you're ready to like go binder. all in. Yeah, I'm 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 all in on this. Yeah. like and I'm gonna bring Josh with me. Like there's yeah. no. I feel I'm like Josh is coming. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for sure. He's, he's just walking. He's, next to you. I mean, and that's the thing too is like I want. I've already know people. I want to get involved in this. Like yeah. I know I want Craig to be in this, and I know like once I get him in. Craig is very much the same. Like we went into the Warhammer store and I didn't really know what I was looking at. So that's why when I, when we were in winter park village today, I was like, Ooh, let's go in that store. Maybe there's stuff in there. There wasn't that we were interested in, but mm. Craig was like, Ooh, I like miniatures. I like painting. It's very calming for me. So as soon as we were like, Hey, we're going to do a D and D thing. I was like, Oh my God, Craig needs to be involved in this. Mm-hmm. And he has a character ready for him. And like, like I said, it's going to change the dynamic, but I'm excited for that because right. it'll, you know, Craig interacting with dirt is going to make me so <laughs> happy. Be real interesting. It's going to make me so happy. Um, and, yeah. and yeah, like it, it, the, the dynamic changed so much from episode one, because like when we all, when we met, it was initially like Josh's interaction with us first was him seeing uh shark trying to get dirt to lick Shart's balls. Yeah. And, and then by the end of it, you were fighting this giant monster and you all clasped hands. Yeah. Oh, we did. We yeah. Did like that. the end of fucking it. Yeah. You're all like, let's do it. <laughs> okay. I promise. You're okay. a bird. I'm a bird. That's notebook. <laughs> uh, but you guys were like, you were in it. By the end of it, you were you were an adventuring party. It was crazy. You all have your, you know. Shit got real. More yeah. things are going to develop, obviously, because you know you guys have known each other for like 12 hours. But um, yeah. You know, things are going to develop. Your motivations for why you're there is going to be really interesting. You might have dynamics where you two don't agree, on, like you and Shart or you and, you know, Absidy don't agree on things. Mm-hmm. And I think those are really interesting. I had a character, you know, one character was a pacifist and then my character was, you know, uh, nature versus nurture. It was, you know, nature always prevails. And we had this, we had a 20 minute discussion about what we should do about something. And we were just at odds. And it's just I'm excited. It for gives that you that stuff. that practice. It does, and it's just it's something that you know. Once again, you're working out your own kind of like shit and hangups, which yeah. I think yeah, without ha- going into like you know real ter- shit, real shit territory. Ha- have you heard of many instances of people using this for real life counseling? Because um, I, I feel like I've heard something about them using it in prisons to kind prisons? of get people. to Yes, there are people in themselves. prisons that have done that. I know that there is a really interesting one about. Uh, the developmental skills for people with autism mm-hmm. that it, it's really good for because it in it encourages social kind of interaction and it problem solving and it puts it in a different kind of like safe bubble kind of environment yeah as opposed to them going outside of their comfort bubble. they were using um minecraft for that too yeah at one point uh, yeah about three years ago four five wow five years ago that i heard about it yeah so it's, it's interesting that it's it's a really cool role-playing tool. type games like are really starting really... to be used in a more like socially helpful mm-hmm. way yeah people are yeah i mean on like i said i i was excited for it i mean you and i talked for hours about it yeah um and i was like oh, i'm so excited i'm so excited and now that i've actually done it and and i mean like i said you and i didn't want to stop last night yeah and yeah. and i mean i was just all kinds of fired up about it. i mean we have <laughs> notes from our from our other um yeah. our other game and, and whatnot and it was just it just um I feel like it's a it's a part of your brain that's not really used as much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I knew we got into it when it was the third episode and nobody picked up their phone. Yeah. Like yeah. there we were on a time check and, and Mike had even said it before he left last night, you know, after everything was said and done. Like as soon as the cameras went off, he was like, Okay, I gotta go. Uh, should have went thir- home like thirty minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, he was like, I should have been home thirty minutes ago. It was like one o'clock. Yeah. And um and then I mean we stayed up to like five. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was it was it was crazy. It was wor- totally worth it. Oh, though. my God. Absolutely. I loved it. But um, yeah. I, I didn't think I was going to enjoy it as much as I did. Yeah. And and I, I like like you said, when we found our stride, I think like Josh, we in the first episode, you guys have, will have seen it. You know, he was like, I feel like we need to start over. And I was just kind of like, no, nah, man, let's push through. We're we're making progress. We're figuring shit out. Mm-hmm. Like, let's just figure it out. And, and I don't know if it's going to take us that long to hit that 
that cohesiveness again. But again, I'm excited so. to see with Craig. Yeah. You know, that's adding a fourth member and, and Jose, hopefully. And, yeah. and, you know, if more people want to get involved. Add more people. And, like I was saying, if your lady, like if you somehow convince her by the grace of God and she wants to play. I don't, she's very open to things. You know, so it's girls at the D and D table are fucking awesome. Like there's a yes man movement, but you know, every D and D is for fucking everyone. You yeah. can be, anyone can be anyone. Like if Josh, you wanted to be like a girl, like rogue or whatever, you could have done that. Like, it's just, it's whatever you want to do. We would have made love. We would have made, we passionate. probably, that's would what have he calls passionate, it. Passionate, passionate. It would have been really his, good with his sword, with my sword. Oh, that's, that's what he calls his. <laughs> you were just going to kill me. Okay. <laughs> murder cock. That's fine. <laughs> But no, that's Mike's thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just it's it's just so fucking fun. Great axe dick. Great axe dick. And once again, if D and D is not like your style, like if you're super into something, I know there are shit ton of other role playing games. Like there's probably a DC role playing game. There's a Star Trek one that I'm trying to read through because I love Star Trek. Batman. 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 Escape the asylum. <laughs> um, but Where are the truth? There's so many things like. Firefly and so many properties have so many role playing games that even if you don't think there's one out there, there chances are is. like if it's something pop culture and weird, there's probably a role playing game, just probably not like Castle or something. There's no Castle starring Nathan Fillion. <laughs> <laughs> I've never uh, watched a single episode. No of one's show. watched Castle. <laughs> I mean, the girl in Big Mouth has definitely watched Castle. Yeah. She made out with a dog that had Nathan Fillion hair. Yeah. Oh, that's she right. Did. And it she was did. voiced by Nathan. Spoiler. Fillion. Yes. Oh man. You Spoilers for Big. If Mouth. you haven't watched it, get the fuck out of my life. <laughs> it's so good. Out. Watched it yeah. two times. God. I I just put it on in the background before I go to bed. Sometimes it's a weird thing. That's to watch. gonna give you some weird. It's dreams, a weird man. thing to it's watch. A, it's it's because I love all the comedians in it. Oh, so I good. love Nick Kroll. I love uh, you know John Mulaney and uh, Jason Manzukis and weird uh, weird thing. Anytime mm-hmm. I've watched it with yeah. uh, a significant other, I have had sex. Really? Yeah, and that's it's really odd to think about because it is the most unsexualized so show. It's because, so awkward because it's fucking, it's teenagers going through puberty. To, like ninety eight percent of the show is about masturbation. Yeah, and I get to have sex after every time I watch that show. It's got to be all the what? hormones, You're and pheromones going coming changes. off the TV. I'm going through changes. And you're like, uh, you. <laughs> all the sexual tension, all the tension in the room. <laughs> Fun fact: It's actually with a pillow that I know. Yeah, uh, lentils, <laughs> a bag of lentils. I that just you heat up the lentils up. to approximately ninety eight degrees. I don't and remember then, if that's what it was. And then I eat them after. And then eat, yeah, this kid's a, kid's a fucking so genius. Gross. <laughs> Why it's in a bag? <laughs> oh. it's no, it's uh, I had I had so much fun. I, I love yeah, it. Definitely fun. something to do again. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I, Justin said he can get here two weeks. I mean, even if we don't record, I'm mm-hmm. down to fucking just play, just keep D&D playing it up yeah. every two weeks. Yeah, and, I mean, uh, it's up to you if you like the one shot and you like the way it went and you want to keep going and you want to make Curse of Strahd like uh, a video thing. Super down. You can totally do that. I'm I'm super down with it. I think uh, if you guys stick with it, I know the videos are long, uh, but even if it like like we've said, like it's something you can put on in the background, mm-hmm. um, and high tension moments, you will you will hear when that is. Um, because I mean, I think it was a comment you made last night, you know, you're a very good at, at, you know, there's moments where you need to speed it up and, and you have us going and then that brings up the anxiety I feel in the room. And mm-hmm. then there's moments where it's quiet and somber and you kind of just wait for us to react and talk and, right. and, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's really awesome. Uh, honestly, yeah. like I had a lot of fun and I think you guys will be able to see that. And, and if you, you know, if, if you guys follow it and, and, and check it out, um, I think it comes across. I really do. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. No, you're a great storyteller. Oh, thanks, man. It definitely, it definitely helped. Um, one of the things I really liked too, especially when we got the the visual, which you guys didn't see, but in the second game we used, we broke a map out. Um, Josh, you're very, uh, and, and like I said, I feel like we got character roles kind of uh, where I was kind of leading things and, and, and starting the conversation. You wanted the distance. That was like the first thing, and because you're smaller. And don't have magic, which again, I have those things, so it doesn't make any sense. I'm normal sized and I have magic. Right. So it's like distance isn't a thing for me. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> and Mike's like, I'm gonna run at stuff all goddamn day. I'm gonna you're rock like, it. You're like, I'm tiny. Uh how far away are we from this? <laughs> uh I don't want to get eaten. <laughs> and you know, you and guys, I did not get eaten. Yeah, and that was another it's just another dimension that yeah. I feel like is is you know, uh, once we have, yeah, once we have obviously visuals, it'll make it a little easier and a little better. Yeah. But I'd love to get like a top down camera. That would be yeah. cool. 
to just. What I, I don't know what we'd hang it off of. But what I want to get drop is a, get another one of these arms. <laughs> I saw um, what someone did was they had their regular D and D table because there's so much shit on the table. They got a smaller table, kind of like your Batman one. Yeah, and they put it on top of it, and then you put the battle mats on top, so you're you know there enough to look at it. And then you have all your room under it, and then they put like lights under it, like it was super dope. Oh, we could use the the <coughs> DVD thing, the wooden. DVD. Oh, the, yeah. the three yeah. cubbies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we could definitely do that. Yeah. No. So whenever you slap like a battle map down, you're like boom, and then you have your overhead like you're talking about, like. And an arm would fit on that too. Mm-hmm. Nice. So this might be the play. Just figure that out. Yeah, a couple of things that you. Wow, you we're know, so you smart in out. real time. Wow. Wow, we're amazing. Wow. Oh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like this is a this is a good stopping point. I feel like we're just yeah. Up I was about to circles. ask what what your time is. Like, oh, what are we at right now? Um, I mean, it's I five been o'clock. Timing it, but yeah, it's dope. Five That's o'clock. exactly what you said. Was five o'clock? <laughs> yeah, I need to get the fuck out of here and get to Tampa. Yeah, yeah. get the fuck out of our house. I oh, mean, okay, uh, great. I mean, great. <laughs> cool. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye. Uh, no, thanks for thanks for watching, uh, Justin. Thank you so much for DMing and 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 putting up with Josh and I for an extra <laughs> four hours. Thanks yep. for having me. After. I actually had a lot of fun doing it too. Are you uh, are you still doing the top tabling? Do you want to plug yeah, yeah, anything? Yeah, yeah, um, If you want to watch me uh, not DM but try to figure things out, I also play a paladin, but I'm a whore. Yeah, um, you are. Yeah, you are. I'm slutty. But um, yeah, we do well, we top can't get diseases. If, <laughs> at uh, toptabling.twitch.tv, we stream. Uh, we're going to start the YouTube channel up. We've got a few things we're going to try to do, like that Star Trek RPG I was talking about. Uh, I think we're going to try City of Mist, which is really cool and new coming out. And then a whole bunch of Let's Plays. So something similar to what you guys are doing, uh, but mm-hmm. a little less podcasts and, uh, you know, a little less Let's Plays and more tabletop gaming, but something fun to do. Dope. I mean, yeah, we, uh, we'd we love to, to eventually co- 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 mingle those mingle. things. I would love to do that. We'd that was to, the plan. Yep, we'd that was a plan to, a year ago. We'd love to insert ourselves into your things. I would love you to insert yourself <laughs> into me. It's well, on that thing. note. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to get out of here. <laughs> Penis. Uh, cool. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. Yeah, guys. Um, keep following us on stuff. We actually are going to be on iTunes real soon. Real yeah. soon. You just have to submit it to iTunes. We'll be good. Um, <laughs> I bought iTunes. the server space. Oh, great. So. Yeah, yeah, so we finally have it. That's, that's a, awesome. That's a thing now. So yeah, we're going to be so on I'll iTunes. So keep an eye out. And uh, hopefully this will be a reoccurring thing. You'll see more of Justin and, and Mike and and hopefully have people coming in and out. Craig and, and maybe his lady will want to come on. And, yeah. I mean, it's uh, it, I think it's going to be a continuous thing. So uh, make sure you that. like and, and share and subscribe and all that good stuff so we can uh, we can keep, keep, keep doing on this stuff Keep on keeping on. Keep on keeping on. <laughs> You're going to see us continue our dice. <gasps> Not the dice. Dice. Uh, bye. Oh, bye. <laughs> bye.